Warning, the following presentation contains cold, hard truths that might change the way you think. Viewer discretion won't do you any good now. Several months ago, the highly anticipated sequel to The Last of Us was released. And the amount of people that disliked this game doesn't even bother me. Compared to the amount of people who think that this is Ellen Page. Like, still. To this day. On behalf of all fans of this series, can we all just join hands and say... It's not fucking her! This is not Umbrella Academy meets the Umbrella Corporation. So stop being confused. Now, believe it or not, I had never played The Last of Us 1 or 2 until very recently. Yeah, please don't hate me. You'll want to save that for later. And unlike people who waited seven years to play the sequel, I just played them both back to back. Well, to be clear, I did two playthroughs of the first one, followed by two playthroughs of the second one. I'm trying, guys. I'm trying very hard to repent. And this is right after coming off of Days Gone, another masterpiece. So I've done quite a lot of zombie killing lately. Is that too many zombies for 2020? Yeah, it probably is. But The Last of Us Part 1 was a game that pretty much zero people disliked. You play as Joel, a hardened Texas-bred construction worker whose daughter was murdered, now trying to transport a girl named Ellie who carries an immunity to the cordyceps brain infection that has led to the zombie apocalypse. Unlike Resident Evil, Last of Us just keeps moving forward. There's not a whole lot of looking for keys or backtracking through hallways while staring at a map. In fact, there is no map. The game is refreshingly linear. But I love that you're forced to look around and inspect your surroundings, searching for items and ways to advance. The items and crafting system are so succinct. There aren't that many things to craft, but they're all really essential and you find lots of ingredients for them. The game also has some of my favorite puzzles I've ever seen. They're really easy, and they're very grounded in reality, and solving them makes you feel way smarter than I actually am. But the combat is where the real satisfaction comes from. Seeing Joel smash someone's face into the edge of a table, or just doing some plain old skull crushing, you feel like you're actually murdering someone, and it doesn't feel that good. You know, in a good way. The game is generally fucked up. Just seeing Ellie getting electrocuted was an image I really couldn't get out of my mind. And now you won't be able to either. But I think this game is so addictive because it mostly feels like one continuous level. As you move from town to town, surviving one violent breakaway after another, the story never lets go for a second, as you get closer and closer to your destination of the Firefly headquarters. Now, through this whole game, it becomes clearer and clearer that by the end, Joel is going to be faced with a massive predicament. Upon bringing Ellie to the Fireflies, we realize that their scientists intend on removing some of her brain to extract an actual cure for the virus. This will also kill her. Now, Ellie was okay with sacrificing herself, but Joel takes it upon himself to save her instead, having to murder a bunch of people in the process. But he had several reasons to do this. One, these guys were being total douchebags. I mean, that's just first and foremost. Two, Ellie saved his life a number of times. Why shouldn't he do the same? And three, he didn't want to lose another daughter figure in his life. But was Joel saving Ellie's life somehow an act of selfishness on his part? He's been transporting this girl who could be the key to saving the human race, but since he already lost one daughter, he's going to do the wrong thing by saving her. This game has fully blurred the line between right and wrong, because some people will agree with Joel, and some will disagree. And the game ends on this sort of awkward cliffhanger-ish vibe, where Joel conceals from Ellie that he killed the Fireflies to save her, and instead tells her that they didn't need her brain after all and they just let her go. The credits come in pretty abruptly, and you're hit with this feeling that at some point Ellie is going to learn the truth, and she is not going to be happy. Is The Last of Us Part 1 a perfect game? Yeah. Yeah, it is. But to anyone who thinks this game didn't need a sequel, come the fuck on. 
the potential that there was for dealing with the fallout from what Joel did. They obviously left it open for some kind of continuation. And since the first one is a previous generation game, we had to see what was possible in regards to improving upon this gameplay model. I can't even believe I just had to justify the existence of this game. But here we are. Unlike its unanimously loved predecessor, it's no secret that The Last of Us 2 was deeply disliked by a fairly large section of its fanbase. Yes, there are people out there who don't like this. There are so many reviews out there for this game. It's a fucking landscape of opinions already. And by landscape, I mean landfill. The good news is, my opinion is pretty simple. I just plain love this game. Now, I would say that getting the Platinum Trophy is proof that I love the game, but I also got the Platinum Trophy for Shenmue 2. So there goes that being used as a measurement tool. But if you want to get an idea of how high the hopes were for this game, just read some of the titles of its reviews. Masterpiece? Absolutely not. Last of Us Part 2 review? Do not buy this game. It sucks. It's so stupid. The Last of Us Part 2 is worse than you think. Yeah. You may already think it's bad, but you don't even know how bad you think it is. Last of Us 2 is the worst game I ever played. Last of Us Part 2 is... bad? Why I stopped hating The Last of Us 2 and think it might be a masterpiece? A perfect storm of utter failure. <laughs> Miserable, self-indulgent, preachy, incoherent, <laughs> pompous, anti-consumer? An hour and 21... Seriously, kill me now. Kill me with a 21 kiloton A-bomb to the face. Last of Us Part 2, complete failure in storytelling. What went wrong in The Last of Us 2, a failure in storytelling. Joel deserved better, a failure in storytelling. Oh wait, my friend Joe made this video. What's up, dude? You know what? Tight video. Honestly, shout out to my boy. Joel did deserve better. Look how sad he is. The poor thing. He just wanted to be loved. Now, although some people were clearly not feeling the narrative in this game, there are also a lot of positive, if not glowing, reviews. In fact, I lost count of how many videos I found that actually do call the game a masterpiece in the title of the review. Like, not ironically. It is divisive as shit. But to find out why, we have to start from the beginning. The Last of Us Part Two opens with Joel telling his brother Tommy about what he did to save Ellie. And even Tommy thinks it's fucked up. He's like, shit, man. Yikes. But then, eh, he says he would have done the same. But we can tell right away that this game is going to deal with the problem of what Joel did head on. And it is not going to brush under the rug the fact that some people might not be too happy about his decision to cancel the cure for the virus. Now, the gameplay here is <clears throat> pretty different from the last game. Instead of fighting zombies, this entire game is just a snowball fight with some children. That's the whole game. I never actually got further than this because I'm really afraid of what's about to happen after this part. But if you're not expecting Joel to get whacked at this point, you're probably wondering what this game is even about. Is it just about a bunch of lesbians? Is it about more zombies? Oh, that's what it's about. About two hours into the game, Joel is brutally, and I mean brutally murdered by a girl named Abby and her friends in the Washington Liberation Front, or Wolf. My heart was beating so fast during this entire scene I really thought I was going to have to call an ambulance. I'm seriously not kidding. I wasn't sure if I peed my pants or if that was just sweat that somehow came all the way from my armpits. I also made the mistake of playing this part at like 1.30 a.m. <laughs> Good luck trying to have a sweet dream after that one. <laughs> Yeesh. Now, to say that some people were bothered by this scene taking place is an understatement. And to be honest, I kind of get why people were bothered by this. Just look at him. This looks like something that was directed by Mel Gibson. 
For some people, this may even be the darkest thing they've ever seen. So I do understand if you- Oh, God. See, to me, that's the worst bit right there. Now look, I know Naughty Dog deceived us a little bit in the marketing by making us think Joel had a bigger role in this game. And that was a little naughty on their part. But it's hard to say that actually affects the storyline if you just play the game and didn't see any of those trailers. Now on one hand, this moment stings a lot because we just have no idea why they did this. On the other hand, it's pretty fucking obvious why they did this. And instead of handing you that explanation right away, the game keeps us completely in Ellie's point of view. And surprisingly, we don't even see Abby again for the next 10 hours of the game. As Ellie struggles to put together the pieces, we're shown a series of her memories relating to her discovering the truth about what Joel did. We see the moment he finally tells her the truth about what happened. It's almost like throughout this game, Ellie is in denial about what Joel did, and her revisiting these memories is actually her coming to grips with the fact that this thing she found out about him is the reason why he's gone. But if you dislike the fact that this game has a lot of flashbacks and time jumps, I can't blame you for that. I thought it was really well done, but that is something that could be hard to follow. Now, I have to pivot to the gameplay just for a second, for real this time. I know that a lot of people don't find this important, but hey, I still do. Last of Us 2 contains the same core gameplay as the first game, but this game is bigger, slower paced, and has even more looting. But to the people who complained that this game has too much looting in it, play it on a harder difficulty. You'll see far less looting. In grounded mode, every time you find a single bullet is like Christmas. Opening a safe is like a joke. Look at this. Just a single quart of alcohol in here and that's it. That's just depressing. You know, in a good way. But this game seriously improved both the combat and the exploration. We've got better aiming options, actual proper dodging, more realistic walking and sidestepping, a way cooler weapons workbench. You can go prone and swing from ropes. Ellie even has a knife that works as an infinite shiv. And I'm about to make a really horrible joke about it. You see this right here is your special lesbian knife used for creating vaginas in people, and then fucking them. I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. This is also your special lesbian scissor, used for, well. Ladies, please don't watch this. This video is for a very micro, microscopic demographic. Men who liked this game. In terms of the exploration, They've really kicked things up a notch in part two. You must explore in this game. There are so many optional hidden areas beautifully incorporated to be very easy to miss. I don't know what I love more, the interior or the exterior level design. Like this right here is why I play video games. I mean, come on. How can you not love being immersed in this? Ugh, I just want to get right in this grass, right on the ground and just kiss it. Mm. Don't look at me, Dina. I'm just trying to take it all in. I never get tired of looking at Ellie actually pick up items and put them away, or take out a marker and circle a new location on the map. Just what the fuck? But here's the kind of detail that I really live for. Behind that truck! Yes, that's right. I am behind this truck, and I'm so impressed by the technical achievement that I'm not even mad. Look at this. You can actually play this guitar. Now I get to pretend I'm every douchebag at the party trying to get chicks. Hello, I've waited here for you. Ever. Last of Us Part 2 is amazing, go fuck yourself. Oh my god, what is this? Ugh. Naughty Dog isn't taking this game seriously. This is just... Naughty. I'm having way too much fun here. Oh, Dina. <laughs> Man, I've lost my mind. Now, let's cut the bullshit. Halfway through this game, you finally find Abby, or she finds you, and right when the showdown is getting hot, we stop and go back to Abby's past.
I will admit, at first I found this a little frustrating. For about 25 seconds. And then her backstory becomes interesting as shit. Her dad was one of the doctors that Joel killed at the end of the first game. And now it all clicks together. Abby killed Joel because he took away her father figure. And Ellie wants to kill Abby because she took away her father figure. They're both caught up in this cycle of revenge and we get where they're both coming from. They're two sides of a coin now. Sure, this isn't the most original concept of all time. For example, Shenmue has this same storyline, where you find out that your father killed the father of the person who kills him. But this just makes the most sense for Abby's motivations. She's not just some boring villain who loves anarchy or whatever. Abby was a totally normal girl until this happened. This is the moment where she lost her shit and the only reason why she lost sight of the light, as they say repeatedly throughout the game. But after this reveal, you proceed to play out the entire second half of the game as Abby, covering the entire storyline from her perspective, leading all the way back up to the confrontation with Ellie. I can see why people found this frustrating if they just wanted the game to end at this point, but I did not want it to end, ever. This is like you just went from Leon to Claire's game. Nah, that's a bad example. They were on the same team. My favorite part of this game's story could be the scene where Abby meets Lev and Yara. Just one of the greatest cutscenes I've ever seen in all of gaming. And by the time you get to play as Abby and Lev, it really feels like you get a whole third game packed into the second one. And this third game kicks ass! Abby's half of the game is clearly packed with all the best parts. In terms of story, level design, set pieces, world building, weapons, and bosses. Does it seem like they're trying extra hard to make you care about Abby? Maybe. Do I care? No. But it was definitely a strange feeling having to fight Ellie as Abby. And by strange, I mean absolutely legendary. This was so mind-blowing. Honestly, I really had no fucking clue where things were going at this point. I don't know about you, but I like being on the edge of my seat. Maybe I'm weird, but I like things that are, you know, interesting. Or how about the part where you realize that the sniper who's been really getting on your nerves is Tommy. The game actually tricked me into rooting against one of the heroes. And that's the kind of ride that this game is. If you're not into that, or you found parts like this confusing and weird, I don't really blame you. It is some out there shit, but it's also the exact same mind games that the first game was playing. Just cranked up a lot. And I think they pulled off making you feel bad for everyone in this story, even if they were disagreeing with each other. During my second playthrough, after knowing the full motivations of Abby and her friends, I felt awful when Ellie kills Mel and Owen. But some people just had no interest in rooting for Abby, no matter how cool her half of the game was, or how many redeeming things she did. And some people really exaggerated the amount that this matters in their life. In fact, the voice actress for Abby received numerous hate messages and death threats because of this game. I think that is the new rock bottom of gamer behavior. Come on. How can you not love playing as Abby? She's got the strength of a linebacker, but the face of a cheerleader? You know, I think Abby's hot. I'm just gonna come out and say it. And if you don't believe me, look at the face model for her. Look at that symmetry. Objectively hot, but if you don't think Abby is at least an interesting character, you don't like characters. First, she does the most irredeemable thing imaginable. We're given a pretty decent reason why she did it. Then we see her lose everything. Her dad, her friends, her dog, her boyfriend, even her hair. I knew she was gonna lose that hair at some point. You can't maintain a nice French braid like that in a zombie apocalypse. Now that would have been unrealistic. <laughs> I mean, you know. I think I'm in love with her. Come on, imagine having her as your girlfriend. Eh, it'd be the greatest thing ever. Aside from the killing people part. Hey, it's not like Ellie is available. You know, the knife and everything. 
Meanwhile, Ellie is just lame now. Oh god, can video games seriously go two seconds without making you herd sheep? Why does every game do this? Man, look at the scrote on that sheep. I'm telling you, this game was just too ballsy for people. You know, this part is actually really fun. You get to look at balls. Does this game even have zombies in it? I mean, I know it does, but they're such a background element. Are they really even zombies? Or are they just really dumb people who didn't like this game? I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I couldn't resist. I'm seriously kidding. But if you ever forget that this game has zombies in it, the unlockable character models are so fun to look at. The best thing to do is inspect the infected monsters in extreme close-up detail. Here we see some very sophisticated gentlemen and ladies. This man is just going for a walk. I don't, I don't even understand what's going on with some of these guys. Oh my god, what is that thing? I don't remember what part of the game you fight this in, but that is the creepiest thing in the game right there. Now, when Ellie decides to hunt down Abby one last time, what we really want is for Ellie to save her from whatever the fuck this guy is doing with his kidnapped victims. I seriously do not want to know. This game had enough traumatic lore as it is. But let me just say, the ending of this game hit me really hard. Ebby and Allie, I mean, Allie and, I mean, Ebby, fuck! By the time we finally get to this long-awaited second showdown, you just want them to be friends and hug it out. And Ellie is really douching out right now. No female pun intended. But this was the only time I've ever played a final boss and just felt like my mother. Stop fighting, you two. Oh, this is horrible. Oh, I don't like this. Well, there goes her music career. But I actually get choked up at this moment right here. Right before Ellie is about to strangle drown Abby in pure rage, she once again thinks of Joel as motivation, but it has the opposite effect. It reminds her of his humanity, which reminds her of her humanity. It's really well done. The very ending of this game was just another series of hard-hitting, tear-jerking, nut-squashing moments. First, Ellie returns home and sees that Dina has left her. She was tired of her shit. She goes into her room to play guitar and can't because she's missing two fingers. I'm, I'm gonna slip my wrists. But then we see this incredible scene between her and Joel, where she sort of forgives him and apologizes for douching and scissoring out on him this whole time. Now, was this an actual memory, or just something she wishes happened? Huh? Either way, she decides to hang up the guitar, and in other words, finally let go of Joel. But what's really interesting is that this could also be the same exact thing that happened to Joel. We know there's the possibility that his wife left him in the past. We know he chose to hang up the guitar at some point, probably because it reminded him of someone he lost probably his daughter, Ellie is really following in his footsteps. And if you look at it like that, this ending is like the ultimate tribute to Joel. Say what you will about the melancholic nature of this ending. I don't quite see it as the massive downer that a lot of people thought it was. Ellie gave in to the darkness and lost pretty much everything, but it led to her saving Abby. Abby gave in to the darkness and also lost everything because of it but it led to Ellie saving her. Uh, try to sit there and tell me that isn't some kind of form of good writing. Try. Both of these games blew my fucking mind, but Last of Us 2 blew me off this planet. It catapulted me into being a die-hard fan of this series, and now I can't get enough of it. I really hope there is a Last of Us 3. I don't foresee Ellie and Abby becoming best friends or anything like that. But it would be really interesting to hear what Tommy has to say about Ellie letting her go. I also have more faith than ever in their ability to create new characters in this universe that I actually give a shit about. And I'm sure there are still plenty of zombies for all of them to chew on. Maybe we'll get to play as Jackson all grown up, and he'll face off against Lev all grown up. And then it will really be like Shenmue. That's it. That was the one, guys been real.